Greetings from beautiful Costa Rica. My name is Matt Rosenstiel. I hope you're doing well. Today I'm up above Playa Blanca looking down at the beautiful Pacific Ocean on the western coast of Costa Rica and I'm aiming to answer the question what time of year should I visit Costa Rica and specifically Guanacaste, this region in which I'm located. Thank you very much for watching today. If you're watching me on Facebook, please give Latitude 10 a like. If you're watching me on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. In looking at the question, what time of year should I visit Costa Rica and Guanacaste, I'm going to be addressing five questions today. Specifically, I'm going to go over the weather, uh, the tourism cycles, your goals for your trip versus the timing of the trip. We'll quickly go over some ideas on planning the length of your trip and how long you should stay. And finally, I'll wrap up with some recommendations about generally some of the sweet spots, uh, the great times of year to come here. Again, my name is Matt Rosenstiel. Please feel free to send me an email. I'll put my contact information in the comments of both of the videos. Uh, let me know how I can be helpful to you as you're considering whether to visit or relocate to Costa Rica. As always, my goal is to give straightforward, simple, and practical information to you if you're considering a move down here. Uh, feel free to let me know how I can be helpful no matter what kind of question you have. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the weather here, and this is something I've touched on in, in a number of my video podcasts. Here in Guanacaste, the northwestern region of the country, we have this alternation between the dry and the rainy seasons. The dry season extends from December until April, and then the rainy season from May through November, more or less. Now, it's important to note when we say rainy season, it's not nearly as rainy as many foreigners uh, might evoke in their minds when they think of a rainy season in tropical country. This section of the country doesn't get nearly as much rainfall as the southern or eastern parts of the country. And so even in August, for example, uh, today is the 26th that I'm recording this video, we have spectacular weather. Uh, during the rainy season, you generally only see a few showers per week, with September and October being the months where you see really those downpours that can come in and soak uh, the region. So first of all, if you're looking at a trip to Costa Rica and Guanacaste, I would say that September and October are very risky months to come down, if, unless you like rain. Uh, even in September and October, you still may very well find weeks like this that are absolutely blue and beautiful but you are running the risk that if you're coming for one week or ten days or two weeks that the entirety of your trip during those two months September and October is gonna be rained on also so in considering the dry season versus the rainy season we also have several months of the rainy season where uh, the showers really uh, don't affect too much on a weekly basis everyone's schedules. Instead they're going to be scattered pockets of rain that you get maybe a couple times, three or four times a week, and you can pretty much go about your life in a normal way the rest of the time. So in Guanacaste, if you like green lush scenery, you need to look at coming sometime outside of those very dry months. In February, March, and April, at that time of the year, most of what you'd see behind me would be a different color, at least the vegetation, lots of it would be brown instead of green. Uh, so we've got this alternation between dry and rainy, and coincidentally, because we have an absolutely spectacular dry season from December until April, which coincides with the U.S. and Canada's worst months of winter, that also coincides with the high, uh, the high tourism season, the cycle in tourism where every year uh, most hotels are full in communities like Tamarindo that are tourism hubs, you see really a lot of activity. So first of all, we've got this alternation between dry and rainy between the beginning half of the year and the second half, more or less. And then we also have tourism uh, starting really with Christmas on through Easter, those 20 weeks between December and April, where we've got the high tourism season and you're going to see more foreigners here, visitors of all stripes, 
and everything is going to feel like there is more activity, more energy, and more people. That tourism cycle, to continue touching on that, we also see a good number of people who come in June, July, and the beginning of August again. Uh, U.S. and Canadian school vacations, or rather U.S. school vacations, really contribute to a pretty big wave of tourism again in June, July. So if we're looking at a graph of tourism throughout the year, uh, and I put together one that is based on no data but just my understanding of things, really you would see that right before Christmas, or right at Christmas, tourism skyrockets and stays steady all the way through Easter drops down again in May, comes up in June and July, and then back down again in September, August, uh, really drops off the map. Uh, so based on your goal for your trip, you can really figure out what time of year would be best. And there's actually a few considerations here based on your goals. Obviously, if you want to have tons of fun experience, nightlife, uh, get to know the vibrant expat communities and meet people from around the world. The best time of year for you is going to be somewhere in that January to April high season. Lot, you know, if energy and activity are your primary goal, it's a great time to really see what Guanacaste as an expat community looks like. Uh, at that time, you would see most of the people who commute, the snowbirds, uh, living in their homes, you'd also see pretty much every rental property full as well. So in some of these communities where uh, there can be very little activity in the low season, from January until April, it can feel absolutely different with a lot of people. If your goal is to absolutely escape the crowds, look for peace and quiet and tranquility, well then obviously you're gonna wanna avoid January through April. And really, most other times of the year you'll find that Tourism has dropped somewhat. Uh, really to maximize the tranquility, serenity, and sort of get the absolute quietest possible time of year, I would highly recommend visiting in August, perhaps early September, although you'd be risking the rain, or headed into November. Uh, on both sides of the rainy season here in Guanacaste, we have sort of sweet spots for visiting. Both May and November, for me are two of the best times of year because uh, at both times of year, first of all, we're likely to have lush green surroundings instead of the brown dusty dry season. In May, we usually will have had uh, several rains leading into the month and in November, essentially everything is still green even though the rains will be stopping somewhere in that month. But both of those months are times when very few tourists are interested in traveling for other reasons. U.S. Uh, does not have good school holidays or long school holidays at that time. Uh, in May, most people are getting ready for their June or July vacation, so you see very few travelers then. And same story in November. Lots of people are preparing for holiday travel, and so really in November you'll find that Despite the fact that the weather can be absolutely spectacular, conditions similar today, blue skies, breezes, green surroundings because you've had the water, uh, in November the tourism really hasn't picked up. So you can find that uh, in most communities really there will be lower levels of activity and more opportunity to have peace and quiet, walk along beaches by yourself, etc. Uh, to quickly touch on a couple ideas about the length of your trip. First of all, if you're looking at Google Maps and planning your Costa Rica vacation to visit four or five of the top highlights in the country, good for you, that's great, but you should be very pessimistic or very realistic about how long it's going to take you to get from point A to point B. And this is where I would allow as much time for your vacation as possible if you're going to be moving about the country. On Google Maps you will very rarely understand 100% which roads are paved, which roads are unpaved. You'll find that throughout the country you run into big traffic jams at different places where there's just two lanes or one lane or a, a single lane bridge, etc, etc, etc. And traveling what looks like a short distance on that Google Map can actually be hours and hours of your time. And really, if you're looking at a vacation where you're trying to hit 
two or three even national landmarks, I would imagine that most travel between major national landmarks is going to eat up almost an entire day itself. So if you want to enjoy a park and then move to another one, be sure to allow time in your trip itinerary that can give you the, the ease to travel slowly, uh, really enjoy the drive because it might take a lot longer than you expect from US or Canadian or European highways, and so that you don't have to frantically be driving from one place to the next to hit all of your checklist items before leaving the country. So for example, if you were looking at coming to Costa Rica and visiting Arenal, Monteverde, Manuel Antonio, and uh, Rincón de la Vieja National Parks, which are maybe cover two-thirds of the entire country, or at least the northwest or north to south uh, stretch of the country, I would really consider looking at either 10 days or two weeks for that kind of itinerary so that you've got time both to settle down at different locations and to enjoy your travel between them and so that you're not rushed. Really, if you want to come for just a week to Costa Rica, I would say it's highly recommendable to limit the number of things or the number of locations you're going to stay. Maybe just to one if, you, if you'd like to do that, but really uh, look at just two locations or at a maximum three uh, within that week time frame so that you're not frantic like I mentioned. Uh, to go back and touch on one point that I uh, meant to hit, in timing your trip you also need to consider uh, if your goal is to see one of many miraculous migratory animals that stop here in Costa Rica or off our coastal waters, etc., be sure to check uh, exactly when the best time of year to see those animals are. Tons of people are coming down to see sea turtles. Well, there's a certain season during which they are coming up to beaches and laying their nests. Lots of people are coming to see birds that are migratory. Well, those are only going to be here for a certain time. And in general, in a lot of the parks, you'll see that the wildlife or uh, the species that everybody wants to see are only here for part of the year. And you'd be surprised not everybody thinks about that when they're planning their trip. So be sure when you're thinking about your goals, what animals do I want to see? When are they available or stopping through the country? Also, do I want to have a more active, energy, uh, more social interaction trip or a quiet time of year? And then go from there. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to wrap up for today. It's a pretty quick topic. Uh, let me know how I can be helpful and what questions come out of this. Uh, feel free to send me an email to matt at cbtamarindo.com. If this looks utterly spectacular to you and you dream of living here someday, let me know and we can try and find a place in Costa Rica for you. Again, my name is Matt Rosensteel. I work with Coldwell Banker Tamarindo Realty. This has been uh, episode number 15 of my Frequently Asked Questions series. Hope you have a great day, and I hope to see you here in Costa Rica sometime soon. Pura Vida!